So here, that was the problem, right? Yes, yes, that was exactly the, the problem. Because here you would have to import universe search just so you have access to the university, right? Yes, yes. But you need access to the university just to get the first web page, right? Yes. Which is a string. Yes. But what you actually want here is a URL, right? Yes. You can do something like this. I thought of I thought of this solution, but then I thought, okay, what if I wanted to navigate to a page that had all of the information about that university? So it had, you know, the name and so basically you would need the university model to to show all of the information for that university. Yeah, but would you like is it is it just because you just said name and URL here, right? And the university has one. So I'm <laughs> looking at the current this. requirements. Remember, we need the requirement. And the requirement here was you need one URL. Yeah. Right? Which is the first one. Then you can define exactly here the URL you want. And you don't need to import any other module. Now, whoever called this call back here, your own university tab, it will actually pass exactly the model you need. So you need an adapter that converts university into a URL. Right? It's a conversion from your from university to URL. Now there's some logic in there. You can test the logic, but it's gonna go in a separate component. Like an adapter. Another thing you can do is if we need more information here, but I don't want to couple this component with that uh, the source of that information. What was the solution I created here? I created another model, right? You will create your own model here and someone else will be responsible for converting the university into that module. But that module belongs in your own module, so you don't need to import another module. Whoever bridges this gap, this adapter layer, will import both modules and do this adaptation. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So yeah, so in this Swift UI view, really the the way that it currently is, it doesn't need the university model. It just needs the university name and the university country. There you go. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. And let's think about then this view, this Swift UI view. What this UI view actually needs is diversity VM. It needs, let's say, name, country, whoops, and selection. Those are things you can do. Mm -hmm. So then you can inject the selection logic into this view model when you make the conversion from university to university view model. And inside this closure, magic happens, right? <laughs> inside this closure, you can convert it into another module or extract the URL that you want without coupling the modules. Because this is a void to void function here. It doesn't expose any implementation details. This is another thing you can do. Okay. And you want to decouple two modules. You don't want module A knowing about module B. And you don't want module B knowing about module A. You need an adapter in the middle that will bridge this communication. And each module will have its own models. You'll see that in the program as well that we show. When you want to decouple two modules, you will create each module will have its own models <laughs> instead of using a shared model. If you start sharing model, you create coupling there, and then every time you change this model, you may break other modules. If you add a property, if you remove a property, you break all the other modules. Modules. <laughs> okay, that's how you way. do the remote yeah. model, and then you convert it to the the local. Yes. Model. Yeah. Okay. Exactly as you're doing here as well. That was a good call. You created a remote university that will provide the decodable yeah. implementation that comes from the back end. Now, what I see a lot of applications doing is having the remote university used everywhere in the application with the details of the back end. 
And then when you rename a property in the backend, they rename here and they need to fix the whole application that uses that model. Every time there's a change in the in the backend, they need to recompile and redeploy all the other modules and it slows down the build time, slow down everything because now we need to fix compiler errors and so on. Yeah, and the trap here is the, it's not going to be called the remote university, most probably. It's going to be called the university. But actually, it's a remote uh, representation of a university, right? Yes. Yeah. It's not even a, an entity. It's like just yeah. data, right? Because what you get from uh, the backend is just a string. It's JSON. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to inflate that JSON into a model. And there is some conversion logic that usually you want to separate that from your application because yeah. otherwise the backend may break your application but you have usually you have no control over the backend it's another team implementing it and you're letting something out of your control to take control of your application and that's not good but you solve the problem here but in this the concept is the same if you want to keep modules separated you will have they will have their own models representations okay thank you yeah that that really helps that really really helps